Good evening. Glad to have everybody with me today. A uh, little bit behind because uh, there's just so much that I want to get into and I really don't know how far we will get as we're studying uh, the week of surprises as, as the from Palm Sunday, Passover, Unleavened Bread, and all the way into Easter. Uh, to make a quick reminder, Saturday at 2 o'clock, we will be having our event for the kids. So bring them out to the Fellowship Building, and uh, we'll have pizza and game, or, you know, uh, Easter egg hunt and uh, Easter egg coloring as well and uh, uh, of course adult spring we won't let you leave hungry either also Sunday morning at 7 o'clock I'm going to do a live uh, sunrise service here in my office and then we'll have our regular church service at 11 o'clock. So if you can come to it, please come. And uh, without anything else being said, um, today we're going to look at something that I've went over time and time again, trying to find out the what and when everything that took place the week leading up to the crucifixion and the resurrection. And we know that Sunday was Palm Sunday, also known as Passover. Monday was when Jesus taught the disciples about the powers, power of the words, and he also uh, cleaned house in the temple by throwing out the crooks. Then Tuesday uh, was a day of confrontation with the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the scribes, the elders, and the priest. And got your Bible, I want you to go to Mark chapter 14. And this is following. Now, uh, if you remembered, uh, we read in Matthew 20. Six. Well, we'll get that in a minute. Let's just read Mark chapter 14, verse 1 and 2. After two days was the feast of the Passover of unleavened bread, the chief priests and scribes sought how they might take him by craft and put him to death. But they said, Not on the feast day, lest there be an uproar of the people. And then you go over to verse 10 and 11, and Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve, went unto the chief priest to betray him unto them. When they heard it, they were glad and promised to give him money, and he saw how he might conveniently betray Jesus. Now, that was two days. Then verse 12, and the first day of unleavened bread. So, uh, when they killed the Passover. Now, Jesus knew the word of God. Um, he said that in Matthew chapter 12, verse 38, you want to flip there and look at it. And like I said, over the years, I've had some debates. And it's caused me to research to see what is actual, factual. And so in Matthew chapter 12, verse 38, then certain of the scribes, and uh, the Pharisees answered him, saying, We would see a sign from thee. Wait. Okay. 
But he answered and said unto them, An evil and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign. There shall be no sign be given to it but the sign of the prophet Jonas. Verse 40. For as Jonas was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Okay, so three days, three nights. That's when he is buried until he's resurrected. 24 hours, 48 hours, 72 hours. Now, with that said, the Sanhedrin had plotted the death of Jesus sometime between the sunset of Tuesday and the sunset of Wednesday, uh, which has been more calculable because if he was crucified at 9 a.m. on Wednesday and at noon uh, the earth got darkened and then at the sixth hour came to pass, then when Jesus said he gave up his ghost, that would uh, would have made Matthew 26 verses 1 and 2 would be Tuesday when he would be betrayed. Now, matter of fact, let's go back to Matthew 26 so we can read this. Oh, because they're uh, having their supper and he goes on down. And in, when you read verse 26, it says, Take, eat, this is my body. Verse 27, he takes a cup of wine, red, gave it to him, drink you all up, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sin. But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth, because they're supposed to be four cups. This was the third one, until the day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. And when they had sung the hymn or the hallel, um, they went out to the Mount of Olives. And, of course, and, uh, uh, that's right after that is when Jesus went up on the Garden of Gethsemane. And here comes... Uh, Judas Iscariot, and uh, you can read all four Gospels. They give slight different interpretations, like like uh, Matthew gives the interpretation of where uh, Peter cut off Malchus's ear and Jesus reattaches it, and a miracle took place right there. And uh, uh, and let me say this. At the to I should have said at the very beginning because tradition traditionally everybody looks at Friday as being when he was crucified and then he raised rose on Sunday, but that does not fit the three day three night period that Jesus spoke of in Matthew chapter twelve uh, verse thirty eight through forty. And I think when Jesus was spoken, speaking, he was speaking literally because he had work to do. And uh, um, so, as always, remember the Jewish day. Our time starts at midnight. At midnight tonight, we'll go into Thursday morning. And at midday, it will become... Thursday afternoon, all the way into night to midnight, and then we go into Friday. The Jewish started at 6 p.m., like uh, 41 minutes ago. Though we're in Wednesday, it would have changed to their Thursday. And uh, it goes from 6 p.m. to 6 p.m. as a complete day. 
So right now would be Thursday, even though we're in our Wednesday. And uh, uh, with that said, uh, when we was looking back there, uh, go back, oh, and still in Matthew 26, um, verse 34, Verily I say unto thee, talking to Peter, that this night before the cock crow thou shalt deny me three times. Well, now this was um, on would be considered our Tuesday. It was their beginning of Wednesday, and uh, and then you know he goes to the Garden of Gethsemane. He takes all the twelve disciples except Judas, because Judas had went to betray him. And he leaves eight of them there, basically at the entrance. And he takes Peter, James, and John to go on up higher in the garden to pray with. And, of course, you can read the story and you'll find that he prayed a while. He went back. They were sleeping. He woke them up, told them to pray. He went and prayed the second time, came back, they were sleeping, and he wakes them up again. Then he goes to pray, third time comes back, and he just says, you know, uh, you, uh, uh, it's in Mark, where he tells them to just sleep on, you know. After you've asked somebody to do so uh, two or three times, then you sort of uh, uh, give up on them. Uh, in verse 41 of Mark chapter 14, uh, this is, He cometh the third time, saith unto them, Sleep on now, take your rest, it is enough, the hour is come, behold, the Son of Man is betrayed into the hand of sinners. Rise up, let us go. Lo, he that betrayeth me is at hand. And immediately, that's when the uh, Judas came, and with the Roman soldiers, the chief priests, and scribes and elders, and they pretty much arrested him on that. Now, uh, in Mark chapter 15, in the straight way, now he's done been before Caiaphas, and Peter's denied him three times. As a matter of fact, the third time Peter denied him, he even cursed that he knew Jesus. And, uh, and then the cock crowed, and when it did, uh, he wept because he realized he wasn't as strong in faith as he thought he was. In verse 15, or chapter 15, verse 1, and straightway in the morning, well, what morning? This would have been Wednesday morning because he went to the garden to pray Tuesday well, it, it would have been our Tuesday night or Wednesday morning early. And they bring him uh, to the chief priest. And uh, with all this said, before I continue on, I, meant to, uh, tried, I started to get this out and I got on a rabbit's trail, is that Regardless of what day Jesus was crucified, what day he was rose on, what we do know is that the Son of God was crucified. He did was resurrected. He is seated at the right hand of God the Father right now. 
He has made it possible for all of humanity to be able to receive forgiveness of sins. And so don't let little technicalities of, well, he was crucified on Wednesday or he's crucified on Thursday or he's crucified on Friday. What I'm giving you tonight is to give you something that I had never really till the past couple of years. And I know one of my Facebook friends had kept making remarks and finally I got doing some research. And it's when I did the research that I found that Jesus was actually crucified on Wednesday. Because that's the only way that would be able to calculate 72 hours, three days and three nights in the tomb. Now remember, Mary Magdalene and his mother, they went to the tomb on the first day of the week, which would have been Sunday. The Sabbath, they weren't allowed to do anything. And when they got to the tomb, it was empty. The stone was rolled away. It was still dark. So it was before 6 o'clock in the morning. So that means that uh, by the time we look, it was the ninth hour. Let's look here in Mark chapter 15. Uh, mm -mm. Verse 25. It was the third hour, and they crucified him. The third hour would have been 9 o'clock, 9 a.m. in the morning. And then, when you look at verse 33 of Mark chapter 15, And when the sixth hour was come, there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. Okay, the sixth Air would have been 12 o'clock in our time. It would have been midday. The ninth hour would be 3 o'clock in the afternoon. And Jesus cried with a loud voice saying, Eloi, Eloi, Lama, Sabathani, which is being interpreted, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Now let me give you something. Right there, and I had never paid any attention to it, he didn't say, my father, why hast thou forsaken me? He said, my God. And Jesus didn't relate to God as father there, but as his God, my God. The God of me, the, the only strong, the powerful, the mighty creator of his creation who sees and knows the uh, perfectly complete works uh, that he does. And he does what he intends and wills and says. And that's why when we read that, it wasn't like the father was had forsaken him because he didn't. He resurrected his son. And where it has said, you know, where we read there, uh, why hast thou forsaken me? If you translate it in, uh, it, it means why have you left me behind or leave behind in a certain state or way or place. It does not mean to forever disown, forsake, or abandon someone or something, but it does mean to leave that one behind remaining there in that state or at that time in the state that they are. And Jesus made it known that there was only one true God in his God. And, uh, and it was God's will that he died. And so, you know, with that said, uh, well, he gave up the ghost. 
Well, they took him. And let's see what it says here. Uh, in verse 37, J Jesus cried with a loud voice and gave up the ghost. The veil in the temple was rent in twain from top to bottom. And that was a very thick veil. It's not something uh, nobody would be able to rip that thing. It was thick. And, uh, uh, and then in verse 42, now when the evening was come, because it was the preparation, that is, the day before the Sabbath. Now, that right there is something that we have a lack of understanding. Because when God instituted the Passover, the, unleavened, uh, the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the First Fruits, and all that, was that there was what they call a high Sabbath, and it fell during the week. Now, the regular Sabbath would be what we would call Saturday. That was their normal, regular Sabbath. But the high Sabbath, let's see if I can find here. Um, The high Sabbath, uh, in John chapter 19, verse 31, I can get my fingers to function. And the Jews, therefore, because it was preparation that the body should not remain on the cross on the Sabbath day. Now, parentheses, for that Sabbath day was an high day, parentheses, besought Pilate that their legs might be broken and that they might be taken down. Then came the soldiers, break the legs of the first and the other which were crucified, but when they came to Jesus, saw he was dead already, they broke not his legs. They did pierce his side, and now came blood and water, and uh, uh, which fulfilled the scripture. And then in verse 38, uh, Joseph of Arimathea, being a disciple of Jesus, but secretly for fear of the Jews, besought Pilate that he might take the, away the body of Jesus. And Pilate gave him leave, and he took him. And, uh, in course, uh, uh, Nicodemus came. They took the body, wound it in linen cloth. This is verse 40 of John chapter 19. Now, in a place where he was crucified, there was a garden, and in the garden a new supture, wherein was never man yet laid. And there laid they Jesus, Therefore, because the Jews' preparation day for the sculpture was not hand. So they had to complete this by before 6 p.m. on Wednesday. It was probably about 5 o'clock. They probably, Jesus uh, gave up the ghost around 3, uh, 3 p.m. And they took him down. They put him in the tomb. They wrapped him up in cloth and all that and, and uh, put the uh, anointing stuff and all that on him. And uh, uh, that's why it, he wasn't crucified on a Friday, because you figure it up. If he's crucified on a Friday, then from 6 a.m. or 6 p.m. Friday evening, to 6 p.m. Saturday would be one day. That would be 124 hour. And he was resurrected before 6 a.m. on Sunday. 
So that wouldn't be but one and a half days. And that's why you have to look back. And uh, a lot of the things that I've researched, uh, some of it, what I'm reading you right here is out of the Church of God. Uh, I've got other research that I've went on look. And you still, you have some that says, well, it was on Thursday, well, it was on Friday. But when you look at it, for it to be three full days, just as Jonas was, and when you read in the book of Jonah, chapter 1, verse 17, and then what we read back there uh, in uh, Matthew, chapter 12, verse 38 through 40, where Jesus said, as Jonah was in the belly of a well for three days and three nights, so shall son of man be in the earth. And, uh, and so to do that, you take Wednesday evening at 6 p.m. till Thursday, 6 p.m. That's 24 hour period. From Thursday, 6 p.m. to Friday, that's another 24 hour period. So you got 48 hours, two days and two nights. And then from Friday, 6 p.m. to Saturday, 6 p.m. would make three full days, 72 hours. And what we don't know, because it was the Sabbath day on Saturday, they weren't allowed to do anything. Mary and Magdalene and Mary, his mother, they had had the stuff prepared to go one more time to the tomb, and they were going to do it early on the first day of the week. Uh, and that's why, you know, Jesus was resurrected. Nobody saw him. You got different versions. You got where the angels was there uh, and said, the one you seek is not here. He is gone. They found his the napkin that was over his head. When you read about that in the Gospels, it was folded and in place. That had a specific meaning which means I will return. And uh, uh, so with the high day Sabbath was on Wednesday night and Thursday since Luke showing the women returning to the body. That's why a lot of time uh, we get too used to tradition and so when it becomes not tradition then because we're not accustomed to a change it makes it harder for us to understand but think about it because like I said the, my friend on Facebook he may be watching this evening I, and uh, if he is I appreciate him keeping on to the point that got me to dig in and research and see exactly what did happen. It's like, was Jesus actually born on the 25th of December? Probably not. Yet, tradition has it, that's when we celebrate the birth of Christ. If you look at the Jewish calendar, it rotates from year to year as to when Passover is. And, and again, you know, uh, they, the 10th of Nisan, or Abib, which is the first month to the Jewish people. And uh, on the 10th day, they were to take the lamb. On the fourth day, they were to, to sacrifice the lamb. Well, uh, I just have to turn my calendar, but Sunday was Passover. If that was the, t let's just say the 10th, four days, 
Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, four days, they sacrificed the lamb. They were in preparation of the day that Jesus, before he went to the Garden of Gethsemane, they had the Passover meal or the Lord's Supper. And uh, uh, let me see if there's anything else in here that I might give you that you may not um, because it's just like what year did he pass away or what year was he crucified I've, I've seen some say that it was the 28 AD, some say it's 30 AD, some say it's 31 AD, and so why? Because the birth, they say, was anywhere from the 7 BC to 4 BC, and he lived 33 and a half years. So that, that it, it sort of throws you because there is certain things of different calendars and different understanding as to how we look at things. And uh, it's just like uh, the second Sabbath mentioned in the Gospels uh, was usually recognized from fr Friday sunset to Saturday sunset. And when you compare both Gospels, and I'm talking about Mark and Luke, and uh, Mark tells us the women bought spices after the Sabbath. Luke relates that they prepared the spices before resting on the Sabbath. So there's two different Sabbaths we're looking at. Uh, and as we read there in, in uh, St. John chapter 19 verse 31 tells us of the high day or the high Sabbath. The first day of the feast of the unleavened bread. Now this is in 31 AD would have fell on Thursday. And uh, so, you know, you've got these variables. But the one thing we can be sure of when Jesus, if Jesus has said, and he did say in several different places that uh, he would be dead for three days and then rise on the third day or, or at the end of the third day. And so, but what he said in Matthew 12, 38 through 40, which correlates with John chapter 1, verse 17. And we look at it a full 72 hours. Then Jesus would have been crucified on Wednesday after noon. Or he would have been crucified at 9 o'clock Wednesday morning. And he passed away, or he gave up the ghost at 3 p.m. and was put in the tomb before 6 o'clock Wednesday evening. And by doing that, then that gives you three full days and sometime Saturday afternoon right around the 72 hours, which would have been the third full day, uh, third day, third night, he rose. Now, nobody's seen him rise. The, uh, the guards that were there in one of the Gospels, uh, when the angels came and rolled away the stone, they froze, they were terrified, petrified, 
and they were told to lie because they didn't want people believing that Jesus did rise from the grave. And uh, uh, so, you know, when you look at all four of them, Jesus had to have been entombed Wednesday afternoon or Wednesday evening before 6 o'clock. And uh, and then that would made him by remaining in the tomb from Wednesday at sunset until sun Saturday at sunset when he rose from the dead. Uh, that would give your seventy two hours, the three days, the three nights, and uh, and everything. Uh, if he had resurrected on Saturday or Sunday morning, uh, it didn't happen because when Mary Magdalene and Mary got there, the tomb was rolled away. Jesus wasn't there. The tomb was empty. And, uh, and we can be assured that the length of his entombment that Jesus gave us as proof he was the Messiah was exactly how he foretold. Jesus rose exactly, precisely three days and three nights after he was placed in the tomb. If he didn't, if he spent one and a half days, then he didn't fulfill the scripture that he said. So that, that gets us to think. See, that's what got me to thinking when, when uh, I'll just call my brother, got a question me and say, no, 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 it didn't happen on Friday, didn't happen on Friday. And the more I dig, the more I found that he was right. Jesus was not crucified on Friday. He was crucified on Wednesday so that he could fulfill the very prophetic words that he spoke of, of three days and three nights, 72 hours, in the tomb before his resurrection. And, uh, and that's why, you know, a lot of time we, uh, we can read things, we hear things, we see things. And I know that I've got, I've got, I've got all different types of Bibles, and uh, here's King James Study Bible by Holman. I've got a Life or the Ryrie Bible. Uh, my pastor Sam uh, used to love the Ryrie Bible, and I've had I've got uh, Full Life, the NIV. I've got Leadership Bibles. I've got the Greek, the New American. I've even got Catholic Bibles. So the English Bible, and when you look at them, they all, all have different study notes or footnotes. And when you start researching, and I, and, and I invite you to research and see what actually took place, because regardless what happened was Jesus fulfilled the very word that had been prophesied by the prophets all the way from Genesis all the way up to Malachi. All that was written before Jesus. And then when Jesus came to born of Virgin Mary, came to earth as God's only begotten son, then with that said, you had Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John that were with Jesus for the three, right at three and a half years of ministry. And he taught them and time and time again, he said, and this is fulfilled, and this is fulfilled. 
when you read where uh, how it was written here and there, and it says so that the word would be fulfilled. And I believe that just as I've said before, when Jesus said three days, three nights, he meant three full days, three full nights. And that's why he could not have been crucified on Friday. It would have had to have been on Wednesday after he was betrayed. And so what matters most is do you know the Lord Jesus Christ? He's done paid the sin debt. And regardless of what day it fell on, what matters is we got his word. And his word is life. And if we'll receive his life, we can have everlasting life. When we when this Sunday rolls around, we should be rejoicing because of our resurrected Savior. The grave couldn't hold him. Death couldn't keep him. The devil thought he'd won, and Jesus went and took the keys of death and hell. As he says in Revelation chapter 1, Behold, I have the keys of death and hell. Satan no longer controls earth. God's people does if God's people would react and fulfill God's word. So I look forward to Sunday morning. I look forward to the 7 o'clock service on Facebook. I look forward to our 11 o'clock church service and I invite everyone to come. I invite you to bring your kids Saturday afternoon at 2 o'clock here at Mountain Harvest Church at Fellowship Building. And, uh, and, and we'll just have a great time. We'll, we'll thank God for being so good. Uh, he's the greatest gift that's ever been given, can ever be found. And, uh, and I know it's not about the Easter Bunny. We've got a pink bunny outfit if somebody wanted to wear it. That wouldn't bother me one bit, but the greatest gift is what Jesus Christ did on the cross at Calvary. And I believe that was on a, uh, on a Wednesday. And then comes Saturday evening, Sunday morning. Sunday morning is when he proved that he was the resurrected Savior. And you also, when you study the gospel, you'll find that when he came out of the grave, he brought a bunch with him out of the grave. And I know that a lot of people don't know that. But you study the gospels and you'll find that as he was resurrected as the firstborn, there was others that he brought with him that walked on earth. And that's why... Nobody can deny back then nor now because there was too much evidence of Jesus and his resurrection power. Well, I thank you for your time that you spent with me this evening. I hope I've gave you something to think about. It sure did. Uh, it, it, it changed my perspective of looking at things. And like I said, I appreciate the brother that kept on over the past couple of years uh, being a little bit persistent and uh, to get me to do some digging. And research is a good thing. We dig long enough, we'll find what the truth is. And Jesus said, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. It is a process. But the biggest process, Jesus has completed everything he needed to do. When he went to the cross and rose from the grave and ascended up to heaven with the Father, he's coming back in like manner. And the greatest thing that you and I can do is to accept him and say, Lord, what can I do for you? And live for him as 
every day as if he's coming. Because he is coming. And we're to be ready and we're to be watching and we're to be praying. And so I invite anybody, if you've never accepted Jesus or if you've just got cold on God, you've just got lukewarm on God, let's pray right now. Father, I just lift up every brother and sister, Lord God, that may not know you, that right now they receive your forgiveness of their sins by saying, Lord, forgive me of all my sins and trespasses. And Lord, to fill them with your Holy Spirit, that from this day forward, that they can live for you to the fullest, Lord. I know what it is, Lord, when you cleanse me and take all my sins away. And Lord, I thank you for that. And I know what you did for me, you'll do for any and every one that is watching this tonight, Lord God. And Father God, I thank you. This is a week of surprises. And Lord, the greatest is yet to be told. And Lord, just be with each one. I pray a blessing upon each and every one, Lord God, that Lord, you just keep them safe and sound and give them words that are in season to be a soul winner, Lord God. And so Lord, we thank you. We bless you and we love you, Lord, for loving us the way you have. And we ask this all in the precious name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Well, God bless you. Again, I remind you, come and join us Saturday afternoon. Bring your children at 2 o'clock here at Mountain Harvest Church out here on uh, 2400 Waterwheel Road. We're just a mile off the four lane at the Caution Light. You cut on Greenville Road and go one mile and you'll come to Waterfield Road, and their sign says Boat Landing. You can see our big electric sign. It says Mountain Harvest Church. Just cut right in the parking lot, and you'll see us out there at the Fellowship Building. Also, remember Sunday. Catch us at 7 o'clock Sunday morning for our sunrise service on Facebook. And also... Come and join us and be part of the family of God in the house of God at 11 o'clock Sunday morning. We And again, everyone's welcome. Doesn't matter who you are or what, you, what your past is. God's got a future for you. And we love you and we bless you. You need prayer, let me know and we'll be praying for you. I get messages all the time, be praying for different people, different things, and uh, and we do, I do, and uh, a lot of times we put them down on our prayer list, and uh, and if it's if I'm at work, I can pray while I work, and so praise be to the Lord that uh, if you need prayer, let me know, and I hope to see you this weekend, and I hope that you have a great, great Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, in Jesus' name.